Okay, it's officially uh, three o'clock my time, and I don't want to uh, take up too much of everyone's valuable time. So let's start. Um, uh, if you just heard that, I am uh, recording this, so um, I can post uh, the video of it later on if, if people would find it interesting. I'm not sure if they would, but uh, I'd much rather have people just contact me and ask me questions and stuff. So, uh, but I thought this might be a good way for me to sort of reach out to people who have inquired about the Global Master of Management Analytics program and uh, just have um, honestly an open and frank discussion about what we've got planned and uh, what we've sort of learned. So um, to start things off, oh, I got a few more people coming in now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, so we are at, at Smith. Um, uh, maybe I'll just stick with my stick with my slides. Don't want to get off track too much. So the first thing is first, we, we've been running our Global Master of Management Analytics program um, for a couple of years. We've been running uh, the same program basically in Toronto called the Master of Management Analytics. And that program has been running for eight years now. And it has been um, quite uh, phenomenal, actually, to be honest. Uh, it has been really well recognized, not only by students, but also by employers and companies. And uh, over those eight years, that, that Toronto program has grown from um, the first year that I ran it, we had 48 students, and now we're coming up around 240 students each and every year. So it's, uh, it's extremely, interestingly enough, it's extremely competitive. <laughs> and so uh, they get thousands of applicants uh, every year. And so we have been, since we started that program, we were actually trying to, uh, or planning on um, breaking out of just Toronto and figuring out a way to offer the program uh, literally are across provincial boundaries and stuff. And, and so that has eventually uh, culminated into what we call the Global Master of Management Analytics Program, which we've been running for a couple of years now. Um, it has been very interesting running a global program during a global pandemic. Uh, and what's happened here is we've actually learned a lot. So um, basically what we're, we're proposing now is yet again, another sort of section of the Toronto program. So it's a little bit stripped down um, from the global program. And uh, I think it meets everybody's basic needs, but um, it is interesting. So <clears throat> getting back when we first launched the GMMA program a couple of years ago, uh, we did get ranked as one of the top programs in the world. Um, so that was pretty exciting for us. And that's what this screen is here. Um, just showing about um, where Queens is. Uh, interestingly, uh, when you talk about news and that sort of thing, um, they did get the price point wrong here. It, our price point, of course, is in Canadian dollars, not American dollars. And uh, in the chart, it's shown in US dollars. So our, uh, our program should actually be quite a bit left in the chart. Um, you can imagine with the, the Canadian dollar and the exchange rate right now. So, so during COVID-19, you know, what have we learned? We've learned a lot. Um, we've learned that, uh, you know, remote learning can be done and can be done very, very well. Uh, we've got um, a lot of faculty who were able to pivot very quickly. Um, during COVID-19, we literally got the shutdown order on a Friday night and started up remote classes on the Saturday morning. And so during the past 15 months, um, we've learned a lot. And one of the main things that we've really learned about is that the students are still craving interaction with faculty, right? So even though um, we call these online programs or remote learning programs, uh, we still run them as though it's a regular classroom. Um, you're still meeting with faculty, the faculty are still giving lectures. Uh, there is a lot more what I would call asynchronous content. We've asked our faculty to really consider what are they teaching? What can be done in a lecture? What can be done in an asynchronous content delivery mode, whether there be videos or um, like textbook, like uh, discussions, that sort of thing, discussion boards, a whole bunch of different educational technologies that we can leverage to make sure that there's <clears throat> as much interaction between 
between you and the faculty member and amongst the students as well. So we want to make sure that students have a lot of time to sort of network and, and discuss things and, and chat and stuff. Um, the other side that's been uh, probably one of the biggest positives actually is uh, the opportunity to network and not only network, but also run things like coffee chats uh, and to be able to reach out to people, cold call people. Uh, availability of people has become um, quite readily available. Uh, people can, you know, you can do a 15 minute coffee chat in 15 minutes, whereas, you know, two years ago, uh, a 15 minute coffee chat would involve, you know, you getting out of your office, you traveling to some location at a coffee shop, you finding that person, having your 15 minute chat, and then all the things have to be reversed. You got to get back to your office. Whereas now with, you know, Zoom technology that we're all very familiar with, um, we can uh, we can have a Zoom call in literally 15 minutes. We can have a start time and an end time, and uh, away we go. Um, so so we've learned that, and that's been uh, very very interesting for for our professor for our students and stuff to be able to figure this out. Um, the other great part is the guest speakers and panelists. Uh, we're able to bring people in now. So uh, in the past couple of years, when we haven't been able to travel to Europe and Asia. In the United States, uh, we've been able to bring those people in. So the content uh, and the guest speakers and the panelists that we've had uh, have remained uh, extremely high quality. And so that's been one of the greatest things, right? So I can bring in a professor from France or Switzerland and uh, I, you know, we don't have to worry about travel plans and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we can just bring them in for that one hour session and uh, they can give a lecture or a talk and be ready, readily available to the students to ask questions as well. And ultimately, of course, uh, like today's session, you know, you can record the sessions for later viewing. So everything, every class now is recorded. Um, you can have these you can post it up to what we call our program uh, portals and course websites. And so even if something did come up in your life um, or you wanted to review the content, uh, you can do that very easily now. So we can now record everything in very high quality, actually, as well. Most people's webcams and uh, our classroom cameras are top notch. So, uh, you know, you're getting high quality recordings. Uh, one thing, I sorry, I should have mentioned this earlier, but if you have a question, uh, feel free to either raise your hand in Zoom or even just come off mute. Uh, we're only, uh, what are we, just a very small group. So uh, I want to encourage uh, as much, you know, interaction with you as well um, as we go through this question. Now, the idea of blended learning. So, um, you know, full disclosure, blended learning uh, is not exactly the title that I would have given it, but um, I'm not exactly sure what the better title would be, but certainly blended. Uh, blended meaning uh, it's both synchronous, which means you're actually talking live to a professor or a student and classmates, uh, and then asynchronous, which is basically posted material that you can uh, consume at your own leisure. Um, but this blended learning model that we are working on, so both the GMMA program and this new proposed MMA blended program uh, will be offered through blended learning. And so we will have class schedules. Um, so you will have to attend those. We do try as best as we can to book those on weekends. We know that we have students around the world. So we've got multiple time zones to deal with. And that can always be a bit of a challenge um, for sure. I know we had a student uh, in the last year's class who just graduated and he was in Saudi Arabia. And yes, he was up <laughs> way past midnight taking classes and interacting with his classmates. Um, so I know that that's not the most ideal situation, but uh, I can assure you he, that won't be always the case. We will always take into consideration the different time zones that students are in, and we will work our best to make sure that there's a nice sort of flow of time frames when these are available. And like I mentioned, everything's recorded. So even if uh, you can't make it live for whatever reason, uh, you can always view those recordings and then catch up with your teammates later on. This, uh, this world has made it much more easy for us to do this blended learning model. I think both students and faculty and everybody else are very comfortable with this now. Um, so we can now offer our, you know, literally award-winning analytics curriculum around the globe. All you need is a computer and reliable internet and you'll be, you know, all set, ready to learn. 
um, we do ask students that you do have to be available for some of the synchronous class time. You can't just re uh, rely on the recordings because that interaction piece is extremely important. So we do want you to be there for class time. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you may have to stay up late or get up early, depending on where you are. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, uh, weekends are for class times, uh, but some professors will have office hours um, or class time, maybe even during the week. And in some cases, our, some of our professors are generous enough to offer their office hours twice to accommodate different time zones as well. So, you know, if you felt that you were um, needed that extra time, uh, you know, I encourage you to not only reach out to myself, but also our professors and see what kind of flexibility they have. Okay, now the analytics curriculum. So what we do here in, uh, in the program, so basically, the curriculum is the same for the same for the Toronto MMA program, the same for the global MMA program, and it will be the same for the new uh, MMA blended program. The difference, though, will be around the capstone project. So we're going to have um, the MMA Toronto program does not have a capstone project. And so with our new blended section, we're also going to remove the capstone project from the curriculum. So we're going to follow the Toronto model. And um, by doing this and by taking these components out, uh, it will actually decrease the price point of the program. And so I think it's going to become more accessible to more people. And, um, you know, it, it's going to shorten the amount of work actually that you have to do in the program as well. So, um, but what we're looking at here for our analytics curriculum is we want to um, look at an organization from the 30,000 foot level, right? We wanna look down on the organization and see all that it encompasses. And in particular, what kind of data is available, what kind of business problems are, are there and what needs to be solved and what you can possibly work on. So if you look at this breakdown that I have on the screen, uh, we have our, what we call method courses. How do you do analytics? How do you do modeling? How do you do analysis, acquisition, decision-making, that kind of stuff? And then we have a, a series of courses that we call application courses. So how do you do analytics in marketing, operations, supply chain, finance, pricing? Um, so that's the application of the knowledge you get from your method courses. And then we have an elective. And the elective, really, we, we've broken it down into two ways. The, there's what we call project leadership, or it's really sort of analytics project leadership, and entrepreneurship and innovation. So again, if you think about your own personal situation, where do you see yourself? Um, do you work for a large organization? Is that what you uh, crave? And you're going to be managing projects as you go along. So maybe the project leadership course is better for you. Or... Are you entrepreneurial? Are you innovative? You want to use analytics to do something brand new that's never been done before. And it's very exciting and innovative. And then I would recommend the entrepreneurship and innovation course. Uh, interestingly, you know, in general, um, it's a 50-50 split in the class, which is always kind of interesting to me. We've got the two electives and it's basically an even split um, between what students choose. Now, in the global program, we do have a capstone project. And that project is 160 hours long, so it's pretty substantial. Uh, usually, we'll ask you to provide your own sort of project. Uh, quite often, if you have a company that's sort of maybe supporting you in taking this education, um, they may have some projects for you in mind. And um, so generally, you would be sourcing your own project or your own work. Um, we do have many partners and several companies that are offering projects as well. So if you don't have your own, uh, that's okay. Uh, we can sort of help you and connect you with one of our partners. Now, again, with the MMA blended, the proposed section, um, we sort of remove that capstone project. So at the end of the method courses, application courses, and the elective, uh, you will be finished the program. And then this is the, the tentative schedule that we've got mapped out. And so what we're going to be doing is actually running um, the MMA blended program at the same time as the global MMA program. And so you will be in the same classes. Uh, you'll actually be enrolled in the same classes. You'll be working with the same teammates and you'll be doing all that through, throughout the entire process that you see here with this tentative schedule. So what happens is, you know, we start the program in January and you're taking these courses. 
we're going to have for the global program, we still have the two international study abroad sessions. Okay, so they'll be for GMMA students only. And they will take place somewhere on here, probably in the May, June timeframe um, at the beginning. And then again, in the September, October timeframe. And when are we going to different locations for each of those sessions? And we're going to try to span the world as much as we can between Europe, United States and Asia. Okay, so we're, we're actually in discussions with um, leading business schools, uh, not only in Estonia, but also Barcelona in Singapore and Hong Kong and Beijing. So uh, we're looking at those and of course there'll be two of those per year per class. And um, that, that will fit into, you know, the availability and scheduling is a bit more challenging, but uh, we'll get those into when the weather's nice, <laughs> put it that way. We don't want to be uh, going to Estonia in January, so we'll make sure it's in, you know, May, June, for example. Uh, and then you can see here from the schedule as well with the GMMA program. Um, the capstone project will be sort of brought into the end. So you'll have all of your courses will be completed and then you can focus on the capstone project. Now, what that means is uh, you won't graduate in May, uh, which is sort of what we call the norm. Uh, you would graduate in November and our uh, Masters of Management and Artificial Intelligence program, it graduates in November as well. So we still have a big ceremony and everything else. Um, so that will still be in there. Okay. Now I'm just going to run a quick poll. So, oh, wait a minute. What I haven't done is this one. Um, so this is the next one. So this is where the difference comes into play. Where well, you can really sort of see it uh, laid out side by side with the GMMA program on the left and the MMA blended program on the right. Uh, and that first line is the big significant thing. So what we've been able to do with the GMMA program, you've got exactly the same course requirements. You've got the two academic residential sessions, Kingston and Toronto. And then you've got two study abroad sessions as well, which will contain not for credit information um, and courses and networking and that kind of stuff. Uh, and it also includes the capstone project and you would graduate in November. And so that program fee, which is an all inclusive fee is 63,500. And so by taking out the study abroad sessions and the capstone project, we're able to offer the MMA blended program at the same price point as our Toronto MMA program. So it's $43,450. So a substantial difference in price. Uh, and that again includes those same courses, um, but it only includes two academic residential sessions, Kingston and Toronto, and uh, you'll graduate in May of that year. So the other big point, which I actually should include here, is that the MMA blended program uh, is approved by the Ontario government for students to receive OSAP. So on that's the Ontario Student Assistance Program. And therefore, uh, because it's eligible for OSAP, it should also be eligible for government funding from other provincial governments across Canada. So I know British Columbia and Alberta um, have good programs. Manitoba has a good program as well. And so, you know, that's sort of, I will leave it to you to confirm that with your own province, um, but it is eligible for OSAP in Ontario. So if you think about that, the accessibility um, based on finances is much greater with the MMA blended program uh, than it would be with the GMMA program. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna launch a quick poll to see where you're thinking. Um, based on the information that I've just passed on to you, uh, which program would you prefer? And one more. So everybody went for MMA blended. Interesting. So money does talk. So uh, and that's fair enough. Um, and that's, uh, you know, very understandable as well, because it is, uh, when you get right down to the end of it, um, it is exactly the same degree that shows up on the parchment that you're going to hang on your wall. It is a master of management analytics. 
Uh, and so the GMMA portion, uh, for example, wouldn't show up except in your tra your official transcript. So um, that, that doesn't really surprise me that the price point becomes significant. Uh, interestingly enough, um, just random information, uh, usually it's a 50-50 split. I get uh, half the people are interested in GMMA and half the people are interested in MMA blended. So uh, it's interesting that you're, uh, you as a group collectively are looking for the blended program. So, so what I will follow up on that too with the MMA blended. So why, are, why do I keep calling it proposed and not yet approved? Um, basically what's happened is uh, universities are nice, small C conservative uh, workplaces and uh, there's quite a substantial bureaucracy you have to go through to get these programs approved. And so what we've done is we've actually successfully gone past four of the five steps. Uh, the remaining step is the Queen Senate. And so we're just waiting for Senate approval on that. And then we can officially take away that not yet approved part and we can start admitting people to the program. So as you go forward and you start thinking about um, converting from an inquiry of the program into an applicant of the program, um, what I could do, you can just say, I'm interested in MMA blended as opposed to GMMA. But what I would encourage you to do is just for now, um, because we, we I officially can't uh, advertise for the MMA blended program, um, you can just say, I'm gonna apply for the GMMA program right now. We can get your application started. It's exactly the same uh, admission standards, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the same program staff, uh, the same you know career advancement support. It's team-based programs as well. Uh, you have all the same stuff that goes on with a regular program here at Smith. Um, so those are all the same things. Um, so I would say, you know, just if you want to get going, you want to get the application going, just say you're doing GMMA now, and we can make that switch very easily to MMA blended before you get an offer to the program. Okay, and so that's it for um, for what I was talking about or what I was going to present today. So I don't know, does anybody have any questions or thoughts? Um, Again, oh, I got a couple of questions in the chat. So, uh, Kay, you said, well, what's the difference between uh, MMA blended and Toronto MMA? So the difference is Toronto MMA, you have to go to class. You have to be living in the GTA uh, and you have to go to class at least once a week. So I think it's usually every Wednesday or Thursday, plus a full day on a weekend. So a Saturday or Sunday and all the classes are taught in a classroom, um, which you have to attend. The um, so since they're the same price, how do we determine which one to take? So basically, if you're in the GTA, um, then it's a bit more of a difficult question. Certainly, um, we have students right now in Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, uh, Newfoundland, Yukon, all this kind of stuff, like I said, Saudi Arabia. Uh, those students that, you know, the Toronto MMA program isn't an option, um, but the um, uh, you know, the MMA blended program would then be an option for you. And so really it comes down to you and your lifestyle. If you're in the GTA, um, can you get downtown to our classroom every single Wednesday night by 5.30 when class starts? And, and can you do that every weekend, a full day on Saturday or Sunday? Um, and if you think that that is a bit of a challenge for you and you're not convinced that you can do that, then the MMA blended program would be the better one for you. Uh, similarly, you know, we have some people in Toronto who are like consultants who have to travel, right? Every Sunday they're on an airplane somewhere or used to be um, on an airplane somewhere. So then they'd want to be able to take the courses, you know, what, in whatever city they land in that week. And so it, it gives you that little bit of extra flexibility. But as far as the program itself, the curriculum, uh, the faculty members, the assignments, the teachings, all that kind of stuff, it's exactly the same. Uh, do we have a, an approximate timeline on Senate? Yes. So um, basically, uh, luckily, uh, Queen Senate goes on hiatus for the summer. So their next actual official meeting is until September. So what we've been doing is we've been pushing the principal of Queens to get this on his, he is a summer action committee and we want to get on their agenda. And I just heard yesterday that we're getting on that agenda. And so hopefully um, we should have approval by the middle of July. 
And uh, as soon as that goes, then we can really hit the ground running. But like I said, you can always start your application now. We'll just sort of qualify it as a GMMA. And then literally we will make that switch. We'll move it over to MMA blended as soon as it's up and running and approved. Uh, what would be the average weekly time commitment of MMAB? Um, so, so uh, well, I'll discuss the GMMA program first. So the GMMA program, it has a lot more to it, right? So you're going to have your international study abroad sessions. So you've got two of those. So it would be about um, five to seven days um, that you'll have to deal with, plus your regular coursework. Uh, plus, you've got your capstone project, which will be about 40 hours a month while you're doing that. It's a 160 hour project over four months. Um, so that's quite a bit of uh, a commitment. Um, but the, uh, the Toronto program versus the MMA blended program should be about the same. And one thing that uh, people probably aren't aware of, I mean, this is a, uh, it is a business program, but it's also a technical program and there is coding. And so a lot of people will need extra time to figure out how to code properly. And so that seems to be the biggest thing. So people who come into the program who already know how to code in R and Python and, and SQL and stuff, uh, you know, they can get through this, you know, you know, 15 to 20 hours a week. If you got to learn how to code, you know, you may have to put on another 10, 15 hours a week on top of that while you're figuring that out. So that's one of the reasons I sort of encourage people to come in, uh, get admitted to the program quickly, because as soon as you're admitted, then we can give you access to things like Udemy, like a corporate account for Udemy, a corporate account for Data Camp, and a corporate account for LinkedIn Learning. And we can sort of give you all the courses that we would say, make sure you get these done before the program starts. Because what we find, I mean, that's where the challenge lies, right? If you have to learn the course content, plus you have to learn how to code at the same time, that's gonna be a lot of work. Um, if you've got the coding done already, boom, focus on that right now before the program starts. It doesn't start until January. You can focus on that and then you can uh, do the course content freely uh, later on. So, so that's sort of the big thing with um, your time commitment. Okay. Is that it for the questions? And then, you know, you've got my email address here on the screen right now. You've already got an invitation from me for this. So you've got my contact information. Um, don't hesitate to, uh, to, you know, either send me an email or even um, if you'll notice in my, um, I have a Calendly account. So you can actually book a meeting with me uh, at any time as well. And so, you know, I welcome that discussion. I, I really always enjoy talking to people and, um, I've been involved with our, uh, our MMA and programs and, and the uh, curriculum now for over eight years, for nine years actually, before we even got it approved. And uh, I'd love to hear from people to know what they're thinking, what their employers are thinking, especially you want to make sure that you're fully prepared for a career in analytics and that uh, you understand what needs to be done um, because uh, this is integral to any company going forward. Uh, you're going to have to understand data. You're going to have to understand uh, things like data governance and how to do it and how to do it. Yeah, I wouldn't, I'm not so convinced that programming is coming up. We're seeing a lot of tools out there now that are what I'd call no code programming or graphical user interfaces for stuff. So um, the program is good to understand what happens, but uh, I don't think you're going to have to code for much longer. I think there's going to be a lot of interesting tools out there. You can just speak and uh, it will pull out your data for you and, and do whatever you want. So it's going to be interesting over the next couple of years. And any company that doesn't uh, embrace data and analytics and a bit of a digital transformation, they're going to be left behind. Uh, and that's just, uh, I think that's almost a fact at this point. And we've seen some tremendous, tremendous success for organizations that have been leveraging data and analytics and, and across industries as well, whether it's oil and gas or finance, insurance, retail, um, what have you. That's the, the view, what I would call the beauty of analytics is that really does have a tremendous impact everywhere and government as well. Oh, are there any plans to include people analytics and coursework in the future? So yeah, we actually, we are in the process of launching a, a center for people analytics. Uh, we've been bringing in, um, if you look at Smith, 
Uh, and what we've been doing, uh, you know, generally our faculty members have been um, from the finance group, the operations group, and the MIS group. Uh, but we've actually been uh, collaborating for the past little while with our um, organizational behavior um, faculty as well. And that's where it gets into people analytics, including the leadership stuff. Is, and so we've been actually in discussions with a couple of different companies about getting data sets and that we've got some real research in there, uh, which is going to be um, very, very exciting going forward because people analytics is really going to, and people analytics means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but uh, understanding your employees, understanding churn rate, like we're talking about churn rate for cell phone users, for example. Well, what about churn rate for your organization? Like when are, when, when are the flags going to pop up to say when somebody is thinking about leaving the program or, you know, um, figuring out how to best um, support your employees and, and that kind of stuff. And that's all data analytics as well. Um, okay, sorry, Kay, are there extra courses in MMA blended? Um, so, so no, there's not extra courses, but there is extra time. So one of the things that you'll find with the MMA Toronto program is that you get, and we found this actually with the global program as well when we we're running it, is that a lot of times um, due dates for assignments will bleed into time when you're learning new content. And we figured that that's okay to go in a classroom environment when um, you can literally, you as an individual student can multitask, right? You can be thinking about different assignments at the different times and learning about new content. Whereas when you are learning remotely, generally you're by yourself. And so it's a little bit more challenging to be able to sort of multitask that. And so what we've done is we've broken down the analytics curriculum into modules. Each module has two full academic courses in it. And we've asked our faculty to make sure that all deliverables are due during the time frame of that module. So sometimes a course will start a little bit later and other ones will be earlier, um, but they always have to have a start date and an end date within the module. And that includes all your deliverables. So everything should be done within that module. So when you get to the second module, uh, all your coursework is done. So you can just focus completely on those new courses and you don't have to worry about it. Because of that, uh, the program itself does get extended a little bit um, into April for the MMA blended, for example. Yeah. Okay, can I ask about how people are graded? Uh, yeah, so there are a couple of different things there. So basically, uh, with most academic institutions, if not all academic institutions, it's up to the professor to determine how they're going to assess student work. Um, we do have uh, two courses that do involve exams, and those are right at the front. They're very technical courses, acquisition analysis of data and introduction to analytical modeling. Um, so there is an exam in those. It's like a 24 hour take home exam, and they're earlier on in the program. Other than that, um, there's always a, a differentiation between individual work and teamwork. And so it's usually a 50-50 split between the two. And so you're always going to be assessed on your own personal abilities, but also the abilities of you and your teammates. Now, I wasn't going to get into this too, too much, but it is something to keep in mind that um, both the GMMA program and the MMA blended programs are what we call team-based programs. So in both cases, you're put on a team at the beginning of the program and you stuck, you're stuck with that team throughout the entire program as well. We don't allow any switches out of them. Um, and then to make things a little bit easier or maybe more difficult, depends on your perspective, uh, we give every team a coach and those coaches will work with you on an individual basis to make sure that uh, you know, you understand who you are, right? That's one of the biggest challenges of being a successful leader and manager is to understand your own personal styles and how to sort of adjust how you communicate a little bit um, based on who you are, uh, but also understanding your teammates and those different types of people that are out there and how do I communicate successfully with those different types of people. And so that team-based function is extremely important and it's a significant part of both of these programs. And uh, so you can expect about 50% of your assessments 
um, will be team based and they can be like we have long reports short reports we got presentations um, we do have some quizzes and that kind of stuff like i said a couple of exams uh, so you can expect a variety of assessments throughout the in program okay now i think that's it no more questions Okay, perfect. Like I said, um, please don't hesitate to uh, to reach out to me via email or set up a Calendly and we can just have a one on one chat or zoom uh, more than happy to do that. Uh, as soon as uh, the MMA blended program or section has been approved, uh, we will reach out to everybody and let you know that this is we're good to go. Um, but like I said, uh, we, we are seeing quite a bit of interest uh, in both programs. And so I definitely encourage you to sort of uh, start your application early. There's no fee, right, to, to apply. So there's nearly, you know, what we're looking for is a resume and, and um, maybe a, an unofficial transcript uh, to make sure you've got your undergraduate degree, that kind of stuff. Uh, but we can start at you as an applicant and we can switch from GMMA to MMA blended. Um, literally, it's just a drop down box in our, our Salesforce system. So it's very easy to make that switch. Um, but if you wanted to start it now and start submitting some of your documents and working with our application advisor, Betsy, uh, you know, that can speed things along quite a bit because uh, in general, you know, these programs, um, they are very popular, especially now that we're reaching outside of the, the Toronto area with, you know, applicants from um, Nova Scotia, Montreal, Ottawa, uh, Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, um, and Winnipeg. And so, you know, uh, there, it could be very competitive very quickly. So this is what I'm saying is, you know, get the stuff in quickly. We can work with you on that to make sure your application is super strong and, and get you into the program so then you can start working on your your programming skills as well okay well thank you very much um, for joining me today and uh, i look forward to uh, to hearing from you uh, in the near future okay take care bye-bye